few knitting tips. G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy, and today I wanted to share some knitting tips with you. This is a video that has been asked for several times as I have been knitting for quite a long time. Now, I am not going to show you stitches or how to knit because honestly, there are so many fantastic videos out there that show you precisely how to make a certain stitch. What I wanted to talk about was just a few different tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that I think have helped my knitting. Personally for me, knitting is one of the most relaxing things that I can do. It also helps with the flexibility in my hands and I just find it extremely satisfying to know I've made something myself. Especially in this day and age where you can just buy anything you want. We don't seem to take as much pride in making things ourselves and there is intense satisfaction in knowing you have made something practical like a jumper, hat, a cardigan, socks, whatever it is. For those of you interested, I have been knitting since my early 20s. My mum taught me the basic stitches when I was very young, but I never knitted anything. And when I was 20 and a student, I couldn't afford some decent jumpers that were nice and warm. So I thought I'd teach myself how to knit. I bought a little booklet that explained all the different stitches, etc. And I haven't stopped since. Except for a period of about 10 years, I'd say, when I found yarn far too expensive. It reached the point where I was paying over 120 odd dollars for one jumper, which I thought is ridiculous. I can go and buy something that costs even less and is just as good. But about 10 or so years ago, somebody told me about the Bendigo Woolen Mills, which is a mills that makes yarn in my local state, who also sell yarn online. And I found their prices so reasonable that it became cost effective to knit again and I haven't stopped since. They also told me about this online knitting community called Ravelry and I'll give you all their details in my description box below but if you haven't already and you're interested in learning more about knitting I strongly recommend you join this community. It is fantastic. I have learned so much from other members. In addition to offering a lot of free patterns, which I still use today, they also have a page for each pattern where different members can put up their project notes and photos of their project of this pattern. It gives you a lot of different ideas about color schemes and they also share tips regarding a pattern. For example, if a pattern runs small, or a pattern runs large, or how much yarn you should need, that kind of thing. In addition, when reading many people's project notes, I learned other tips that they would share. Certain techniques which I had never heard of before. So if you are a budding knitter and you're looking to learn more, I highly recommend that you join the Ravelry community because you will learn a lot. Plus, members are also very generous and quite happy to share their expertise with others. Let alone all the free patterns that you can get. Now, one of the first tips I can give you guys is practice, 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 practice. That is the only way you will get better at knitting. You cannot knit one item and then not knit for years and expect to have the same expertise as somebody who knits regularly. And for me, I can't watch anything unless I'm knitting. And when you become more experienced at it, you'll be able to as well. But it takes practice. Practice is key, I think. The more you practice, the better you will get at it. The quicker you will get at it. I know some people think speed is of the essence. I don't agree, not with knitting. I think you need to knit at your own pace, whatever it is. The second thing is finding the right materials to knit with. 
and I'll start first with knitting needles. Most of my life I was knitting with straight metal needles. They were my favourite. I tried bamboo, I tried plastic, but metal straight needles were my favourite. Until I joined Ravelry and everyone was talking about circular needles, which I had never heard of. I don't know if I even saw them. I certainly didn't use them. But <laughs> I have become a complete and utter convert. I don't knit with anything else but circular needles. And this is what a circular needle is. It has like a flexible string of plastic or whatever material this is, and then metal ends. There are many different types, which I have tried and I don't like. These are the only ones I will buy and the only ones I use. These are, I think, called Addy needles, and I'll put the name on the screen for you. Some circular needles that I've tried, I find the stitches catch where the metal joins the plastic. These are the only ones I have found that my stitches move very smoothly from the plastic onto the metal. And I love them. I've had these for years now, probably 10 years, and they last for years. They're probably a little bit more expensive than some, but they are worth every penny. Now these are my favorite knitting needles, but obviously you will need to try several and then decide which ones you like the best. I know they also have, I think, bamboo ends and probably plastic and other metal ones. But for me, this is it. And all my knitting needles are in this style by Addy. They also have, I think, lace ones, which are more pointy at the tip to make it easier to knit lace stitches. Next is your yarn. Okay. This is a 50 gram ball. I think this is five ply. Yep, this is five ply. Ply is how we differentiate yarn in Australia. And ply is how many strands make up your yarn. The more ply, the thicker the yarn. The less ply, the thinner, obviously. Now, some yarn come in 50 gram balls like this. There are also 100 grams, and then there are 200. This is a 200 gram ball of five ply wool, which I think is also called sport overseas. Personally, I prefer buying larger balls because it means less threads to sew up at the end once you've finished your project, whatever it is. It also means less joins. You don't have to attach new balls all the time. When you're knitting with 50 grams, especially if it is a thick yarn, it seems like you hardly need it all before you have to join a new ball to your project. As for the material that I like to knit with, frankly, I will not touch synthetics. I knit with wool or cotton or any other natural fiber. I do not like knitting with any synthetics unless it is only a part, say, of the yarn. Because you spend so much time knitting something, a jumper can take anywhere between two to six to eight weeks. Then I want something that will also last as long. And in my experience, natural yarns last a lot longer than synthetics do. They wash better as well, and they're much, much warmer. <laughs> Definitely. Whilst I tend to buy a lot of my yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills, and I have a huge stash of their yarn, I do occasionally buy from different places as well. Sometimes they may not have a color I want, or a yarn thickness that I want, or I just want to try something new. This jumper, for example, has been kneaded with Cascade yarn, which I do like, but it pills a lot, which means you get little balls always on the sleeves, particularly. My experience with Bendigo Woolen Mills is that few of their yarns do this. Most of theirs are excellent, and I don't have that issue. Sometimes you'll also find that some of your yarn may have breaks in it, even though it has been all rolled up. Very, very rarely have I found any breaks in my Bendigo Woolen Mills. And no, I'm not being paid by them. This is just my experience with yarns. 
I have knitted, for example, with Click Asian and Patents and lots of other yarns. They are also much more expensive, not necessarily better quality, and sometimes I have found breaks in them. I can count, I think, on one hand how many balls from Bendigo have had breaks in them. And I have knitted dozens of projects with their yarn. Obviously, though, the yarns you choose will entirely depend on your taste and your experience. You may find one you really love and then you'll stick to it. Because <laughs> that's what I do. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also good to mix it up sometimes and knit with different yarns because they feel different too as you're knitting. Something else you'll need, and I forgot to get mine now, is a measuring tape to measure how long, say, something is, whether it's a sleeve or from the underarms down to how long you want your jumper. I find measuring tapes invaluable. I always use them. The last material I use for my knitting, I guess, is what I call stitch markers. I just use little bits of yarn. I tie a knot around it and I slip it onto the needles and that way I can separate my stitches. I have tried the plastic stitch markers and I don't find them useful at all. I do like using yarn and it costs me nothing because it's usually a little bit left over from any project. So I have many different colors for the different yarn so I can tell immediately where my stitches start or where that marker is meant to point to, whether it is a beginning of a pattern or whatever it is. So that's the materials. One of the tips I wanted to give you is how important the tension when you're knitting is. The tension determines whether your stitches are going to be even or not. If your tension is not consistent, your knitting will show up as inconsistent. Now how you hold your yarn will determine the tension of your stitches. The tighter you hold the yarn, the tighter the stitches. The looser, obviously the looser the stitches. But most important is keeping it at an even tension. And that determines how you hold it. This is how I hold the yarn for me. Everyone has different ways. There are myriad ways of holding the yarn. But this is what works for me. It means that my tension is very even and I am apparently a tight knitter anyway. But not too tight that the stitches can break. Now, the way I hold the yarn in my right hand means I'm an English style knitter. Most people overseas tend to hold it in their left hand, which means they're a continental knitter. And if you're holding it in your left hand, I think it's something like that. I can't do it like this. I kind of have to do it, you know, naturally it will feel better. But something like this. It doesn't matter. Like I said, there are many, many different ways you can hold the yarn. And as long as you make it consistent, then your stitches will look the best. But that is why tension is so important. Because that is what determines how the stitches look on your project, whatever it is. And you don't want to be inconsistent because it will then look uneven. Like the stitches will look uneven. The lines of each row will look uneven. The best way to learn which one is for you is to try different methods of holding your yarn. Whether you prefer left or right hand, etc. And the only way to do that is with practice. Your hands will tell you which ones they like the best. I like holding it in my right hand, though I have also learned to hold the yarn in my left hand so that when I do color work like this, rather than having to drop the yarn and pick up a new color, I can hold two colors in my two hands. It has made my knitting a lot, lot faster. And that was a tip I learned through Ravelry. So tension is key. To having nice even stitches. Some people do need a tension square before they start a pattern. Tension squares are used to measure how many stitches you will need so you can get the correct size. 
I'll be honest, I don't. <laughs> I should, because if you don't and you get the tension wrong and you get the number of stitches wrong, then your project, for example, a jumper, can turn out too big or too small. And I have been known to unravel complete jumpers because they were wrong sized. So tension squares do help. Obviously, if you get very experienced, you know roughly how many stitches you need for your particular size, for example. But for beginners, I think tension squares are a good idea. Though I don't think entirely necessary. Okay, next tip. I've been knitting for a long time, long before the internet came along. And most patterns back then used to run very big, very bulky and oversized and everything was knitted in pieces you'd knit the front separate from the back separate from the sleeves and you'd have to sew everything up <laughs> I hate sewing with a passion I hate even sewing buttons and refuse to do it my friends or my mum used to sew up all my knitting because I just wouldn't do it when I got involved on Ravelry everyone started talking about knitting in the round and I have become a complete and utter convert I love knitting in the round and what that means is this jumper for example has no seams there are no seams running down the sides there are no seams on the sleeves either I absolutely love knitting in the round because it means no sewing the only sewing that I have to do is weaving in the threads when I finish the jumper or the loose ends and I actually don't even use a needle for that I use a crochet hook I find it much easier for me and I can get it done very quickly I don't even have to thread a needle with yarn which is not always easy I just leave extra long bits of yarn and just thread it through and then cut off what I don't need. There is this ongoing debate about whether knitting in pieces and sewing it together looks better than things that are knitted in the round. And we're talking mainly jumpers and cardigans. And personally, I find knitting in the round is so much faster because you're not stopping, casting off, casting on, starting again. And I think they look just as good as something that has been sewed together. Obviously, that will depend on you. You may prefer knitting in pieces, but I certainly don't. And when I do get a pattern that is set out to be knitted in pieces, I don't. I actually still knit it in the round. Knitting in the round, especially like for a jumper, not so much with cardigans, but with jumpers, it is faster too because you are only knitting net stitches. You are not knitting pearl stitches. Now, when I knit a cardigan, for example, I knit the whole thing in one section with no breaks, but because it is enjoined, when I knit, one side is the knit stitch, the other side is the pearl stitch, for example. I've also learned another method of doing sleeves, joined with no seams. Generally, for knitting sleeves or socks, etc., people recommend, or traditionally it was recommended, that you use four double-pointed needles. I tried it, I hated it. So I don't. I knit with circular needles. There are several methods that you can use. You can either use a small circular needle. I find this size ideal for hats. I think this is a 40 centimeter one. But for sleeves, I like to use long ones in what is called the magic loop method. It takes a bit of practice to learn it, but now all my sleeves are knitted with a needle this size. The magic loop system makes the sleeve look more even to me. I found when I was knitting with four double pointed needles, there would always be some loose sections on each of the four points. That is one of the best things I learned through Ravelry, the magic loop method. I love it. Highly recommend it. As for stitches, the two basic ones are the knit stitch and the purl stitch. This is knit 
The inside opposite is the purl stitch. And of course there are many other different types of stitches or combination of stitches that form patterns. Most patterns have a set of stitches, could be anywhere between 2 and 16, 30 stitches that are repeated. Usually anything with a pattern won't be the complete jumper or cardigan. It will usually have repeats of patterns. Usually, once you learn a repeat of a pattern, you can just keep knitting it. However big the piece is, whether it is a blanket or a jumper or a cardigan or whatever it is. When I'm knitting something that has a repeated pattern, my first aim is to learn that pattern off by heart so I don't have to look at the printed pattern. Once I know that pattern, then I can just knit it without stopping looking at the pattern and going on. I find that very useful to make my knitting flow faster. In my experience, the most difficult and time consuming of the knits are cables. They take time. And cables usually require three sets of needles. Your regular, for example, circular needles and an extra one to hold the stitches either at the front or the back so that you can create this cable. You can knit cables without a cable needle but in my experience if there are quite a few stitches that you need to hold on your cable needle I usually lose them and I find it much easier to do so using a cable needle. Cable needles are just a straight double pointed needle. I've even used pencils. Yeah, you can use anything. It's just to hold the stitches either in the front or back while you knit other stitches. And that's how you get the twist on a cable, for example. But there are many, many different types of cables. My experience is they take the longest because you have to stop, you have to do the cable and then move on. Next there is very lacy patterns or textured patterns. They're some of my favourites. I love knitting those. They usually have a repeated pattern and it's very easy to make mistakes but it's also more forgiving I think than mistakes in cables. If you get the cable wrong and it faces the wrong direction you will notice it when you look at it. Whereas lace you can get away with a few errors here and there but it takes some concentration to ensure that you get the pattern right. Then there is colour work which is like this also called Fair Isle. I love colour work myself. It is straight knitting too which means that it's either knit or purl. There's nothing really in between. It is just involving more colours. And the more colours you have the more complex the colour work can look. That is when I found it extremely useful to learn to knit with both hands. And then of course there is just plain knitting where you do knit on one side and purl on the other. Or if you're knitting in the round, you just knit throughout the project. For beginners, I always suggest you start with something small and don't be too ambitious because it can take a bit of time to learn the different styles, the different stitches, how to do them, to learn how to hold your yarn. You are better off starting with a very simple pattern rather than one that has a lot of cables because it will be hard for someone who is unfamiliar with knitting to start with something as complex as cables. You start small and grow, basically. You can even start, for example, with a scarf, just something plain and long. It'll get you into the habit of just knitting over and over again, which is what most knitting is. It is extremely repetitive. The results may differ depending upon what you're knitting, but it is a repetitive process. And as I said before, practice is how you will get better. You'll get better at holding the yarn, at having an even tension. You'll get better at different techniques. You'll get faster too. Speed is not, however, the most important thing. I think accuracy is. 
and when you're new, I think it is important to follow a pattern because it will make it easier for you to then knit that project, whatever it is. And most patterns have the same abbreviations everywhere. They usually also have a key. What, say, the abbreviations mean. K1 means knit one, for example. P2 means purl two stitches. They also usually have graphs. Some people prefer the written instructions, other people prefer graphs. Frankly, I don't mind either way. It doesn't worry me. Once you've learned the basic abbreviations, you'll find it much easier to follow a pattern. I also suggest that you start with a cheaper yarn rather than an expensive one, at least to begin with. It could be that knitting may not be for you. I know it isn't for everyone. In my experience, the easiest things to knit are scarves and blankets because they're usually rectangular and straight. There are no, say, cutting in for an underarm or for shoulders. It is just straight knitting. Next, I would say jumpers are easy for me, but you know it's hard for me to gauge that because I've knit many, many, many jumpers over the years. Probably, God, I don't know, maybe a hundred jumpers over the years, maybe less, maybe a lot more. I have no idea. Generally, every year I knit around 15 to 20 items, sometimes more, sometimes less. And most of them tend to be jumpers or cardigans. Personally, I find jumpers easy because there's no sewing, there's no break, it's just round knitting generally. Next, I would say are cardigans. Very similar, except that you have a break down here. And of course you have sewing, yeah. And of course you've also got to pick up stitches to do the band where the buttons are going to go. And of course, I forgot to mention, there are also shawls. Shawls are beautiful, no doubts. I love knitting shawls. I've made a few for friends, I've made a few for myself. I just really enjoy the process. I don't wear as many as I should, though I have been trying to wear a few, but that is something I really enjoy. And some of them can be very easy, but some can be a little bit more complex. Ultimately, I think it depends on the stitches that you're knitting as to whether a project is really hard or really easy. And I guess the last tip I'm going to give you is patience. You need it. Yeah, knitting is not a fast hobby. Knitting is not something that you can do a couple of days and you're done unless you're knitting something very small. If you want to knit a jumper, for example, or a cardigan, it will take you weeks. Unless, of course, you're knitting all day, which most people can't do because it does wear on your shoulders. And you might find, because it happens to me when I overdo it, I get sore arms or sore shoulders. And if your body is protesting, that's time to put down your knitting needles. It'll get done when it gets done. That's why I said patience is important. And there is nothing more satisfying than knitting something and seeing it slowly take shape. That is extremely satisfying for me. The end result is the best though, when you get to wear it. Yeah, that is amazing. For me, it is one of my favorite hobbies. It is something I do regularly all the time, but not all day. It's usually in the evenings when I'm watching something and it's extremely satisfying and relaxing. I find I don't even think when I knit, I just knit and enjoy myself watching, say, a favorite show or YouTube or whatever it is. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. I have no idea if any of these tips are going to be useful. I hope they are. Now I'd love to hear if you are a knitter or you're thinking of starting to knit and any tips that you might have. And you can let me know down in the comments or you can contact me on Instagram. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then you can do the usual. You can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.